Hey everyone and welcome back to the automated container terminal video series. It has been six months, I know, and I'm very sorry for that. I wanted to pause of about two months for budgetary reasons, so I thought in these two months I can make a nice animation series. Well, in the end it turned out that I needed six months to make them. <laughs> so I heavily underestimated the time needed to make these animation series. But it took a really lot of time. Um, to make the rocket launch scene I spent about four weeks I believe. I didn't get it right and so you know. <laughs> but um, here I am, I'm back. The uh, container terminal was stored under my desk so I had to uh, clear some rubbish out of it. I had to undust it. Um, but it's ready to go. So. I promise you, this is now my uh, ongoing project and I will be keeping working on it until the sucker is finished. So in the last video, six months ago, you've seen that the container crane can move containers from the railway cars to the monorail cars and back. And that went pretty well actually, but there was one thing that we didn't take into account. And that was that the rail cars were in a fixed position. And that will be, and that won't be the case in um, in the final situation. Of course, the train is arriving at the terminal, and then the train needs to stop at a certain position. There's not much room for play on the container wagons, and I've done that because I don't want them to slide around when riding around with the train. Um, that's something you don't see in real life as well. So I don't want to do it here as well. So that means that I need to stop the train within. A precision of about half a centimeter and that is really really difficult I had this problem also when I was building the coal terminal a few years ago um, but I cheated a bit then the coal wagons were a bit long so there was a bit of play in that area and next to that I used three identical locomotives so every coal train had exactly the same length so I could look with the sensor at the front of the train and when it came in the right position, I just stopped it instantly. So the only thing I had to do was looking at the front of the train and when it hit the sensor, I could stop it instantly. And by positioning this sensor, I could make the train stop within one centimeter or something like that. But now it's a different story. I need half a centimeter or maybe three quarters at the max. But there's another thing and that's that I'm gonna use different locomotives and these locomotives have different lengths so I can no longer look at the front of the train to make the train stop because then the containers behind the train will stop at different positions so I've been thinking and there are a few solutions for this the first one is using RFID tags so I'm gonna tag every train when a train rolls into a terminal I read the tag and based on that I can calculate the offset that the crane needs I tested it a bit and it turns out that the 9 volt rails is actually interfering with the RFID signal. I didn't test it a lot so I didn't test other manufacturers or something like that but for now I want to park this RFID thing for, uh, for another time. Also because I need to make the train stop at half centimeter precision and that's also because I can't look at the front of the train to make it stop since I need to stop it very precisely and not within two centimeters like I did with the coal terminal. So I came up with a different solution that we're gonna check out now. So I built a little setup here, it's proof of concept. You all know the uh, automated compressor that you see there. Furthermore, we got an Arduino uh, motor driver to power the track and a lot of wires going to a uh, servo motor for the pneumatics and uh, sensors. The proof of concept is as follows. We have a little distance sensor over here and this distance sensor is going to measure the distance to the back of the train and when it reaches a certain value the train is stopped and by doing so we have the containers every time in the exact position. Now there's only one problem. How does the system know that it can extend the uh, distance sensor? because if you do it now, you got a crash, of course. So that's why I installed another sensor over here. And when this sensor here is triggered, it means that the back of the train has cleared the path of the distance sensor. Now I got some 
colored bricks over here I'm going to use them to indicate after every test run where the back of the train was and so we can see if it's a bit of a consistent system or not and I can already tell you it's not but let's do the test runs and see what the results are So this is the result and as you can see we have accidentally four different readings and since I need a precision of about one stud at the maximum these four studs won't cut it it's just um, it's not precise enough so how did this happen well there are a few variables in this equation the first one is the sensor that I'm using maybe it doesn't read this accurate within half a centimeter um, I don't know so I can try another sensor Another thing is stopping the train. It's still a bit of, you know, the train has a bit of momentum and um, there can be variations in it as well. So that can, um, that's a problem because the, the second one I, ca I can't do very much about it. I run the train as slow as I can. Um, if I run it even slower it'll stall. It can stall, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So, you know, so I can't do very much about that. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is going to try a different sensor. I'm going to try an infrared sensor instead of an ultrasonic and see what the results are then. And if that doesn't work, then I probably just have to stop the train at a certain point, measure the distance to the back of the train and um, use that for calculating an offset for the crane. Something like that. I don't know yet. I just have to figure it out. So thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions or comments or uh, whatever, please share them with me. Please also let me know how happy you are that I'm back <laughs> with this project. And uh, thank you for watching again and I hope to see you next time. Bye.